who's happy to be in God's presence this morning. Thank God for God's, uh, for Isaac's testimony this morning. God's word is faithful. Amen. He is faithful. His word is faithful. And we've been going from glory to glory, power to power in every season of our life. Amen. See, you cannot come to this church and fail. That's it. You can't. You can't fail. It's impossible for you to fail. I'm not just saying it. I speak it from a place of revelation. Amen. I've I've shared this with you before and I will share share it again. Many years ago, the Lord told me, while I had absolutely nothing, praying and crying out and 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 seeking after his face he said you cannot fail you cannot die before your time you will fulfill your plan and your purpose that was a time when I was living in fear fear of what am I going to do what my future is looking like fear of death because you know I've, I've seen death I've seen the devil almost take me out and at that time, I went to Jesus and I said, God, this is the mess that has been happening in my life. What's going to happen? And I, and I began to draw close to him. And the Lord just said one word, you cannot die. Amen. And I, and I went to that place where Jesus said, those who live, if you believe. Amen. If you believe you can you will not that's it that word went deep into my spirit and i believed god humility in the spirit is simply believing what god says pride is when you try to help god humility is when you simply believe say this with me humility in the spirit is when you simply believe. That is childlike faith. Childlike faith is whatever God says, you simply believe. But you have to build up your spiritual stamina to get to that place. You know, people think, oh, childlike faith. So a child is saying it. If you say something to a child, the child simply believes. But a lot of people can't believe like that. It is very difficult for them to believe like that. The reason why they are not able to have that childlike faith and simply believe is because the principles of the world, the systems of the world has programmed your mind. Amen? Can one of you come this side just a little bit more? <laughs> so I can equally see both sides. <laughs> The principles of the world and the and, 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 and the the principles of this the systems of this world has programmed the mind of the people. And because the principles of the world has programmed the minds of the people, it takes time for you to reprogram, to renew your mind. The Bible says do not be conform to the patterns or the basic principles of the world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind then you will know the pleasing the good will the good pleasing will of god so which means without reprogramming you will stay in the same place no matter how much you go to church it's not going to transform you if you don't allow yourself to be transformed from within. Amen. True transformation begins in your spirit, your mind, and then your body. Amen. It is those who diligently seek after God. It is those who diligently who are serious about the things of God are going from level to level. Amen. I'm not interested in just 
staying in the same level. I want to go to higher level. I want to take you with me to higher levels. Hallelujah. Last week we, we saw, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. We don't live by the bread offered by the world. Because number one, you have to understand, you are no longer a mere human being. You are now a spirit being, transformed by the very life of God, the Zoe of God. You are being transformed. You, you can f sit in that couch and he can play there. Feel free. We are very free here. Yeah? We are transformed. What happens when you believe in Christ is that the very life of God transforms you. It makes you into another being. You are a new creation. You have to understand that. Right? You are a new creation. Which means you are no longer the person you were before. You are no longer the old man again. Amen. But you still have memories. You still have the old thoughts. You still have the old patterns that happened in your life. And you have to consciously work on breaking those patterns in your life. Amen. See, I don't believe. See, once you come into Christ, generational curses and all this cannot come after you. Okay. Unless you're ignorant. Okay. There are some things that can affect you. There are like, for examples, um, certain behaviors, certain things that you have to pray and break. Okay, but when you come into Christ, those things can't affect you anymore. The moment you come into light, yes, Satan might come after you, might try to persuade you, you become a threat in the kingdom, but you have authority. Amen. You're not a weakling anymore. You're not someone who has to beg God anymore. You are a son of God. Amen. The Bible says, know ye not that ye are gods, that ye are sons of the living God but you die like mere men for ye, ye know not you don't know who you are because you lack your identity because you lack the understanding of who you are you're dying like mere men the moment you come into Christ you come to the higher dimension of immortals and that is where God is calling you to hallelujah so today I've titled my message the power of meditation the power of meditation and contemplation. Amen. Everybody say the power of meditation and contemplation. A man who meditates and contemplates is a man who is going to build a very strong mind. Amen. If you don't learn to meditate and contemplate, you will be carried around by the winds of change. If you don't learn to meditate and contemplate in the word and in the things of God and by the spirit of God, you'll be looking for the next news that is going to scare you. I don't listen to the news anymore. Not because I don't want to know what's happening in the current events of the world. I, I am aware of those things, but I'm more aware, I'm more aware of my spiritual reality. Amen. Because when you are spending so much time with what's going on in the world, hearing the doctor's report and what your boss has to say and every other thing that people are saying, you are taking yourself away from your true reality. See, it takes time to build spiritual stamina. Amen. A lot of people talk about, you know, uh, the kingdom is only about salvation. Look, salvation is just the entry point into the kingdom. The cross is just the door through which we enter. But once we enter, salvation isn't all. God's heart for man is transformation, not salvation. You with me? It's transformation, not salvation. Salvation had to happen because of our own fault. <laughs> you with me? Because we rejected God, we need salvation. 
So you, you have a child, okay? Your priority for the child is the transformation of the <laughs> child. The child only needs salvation if he goes away. Right? So we were lost. So salvation is to bring the lost souls back to the to the father. But what happens after we come back to the father? Maturing into sons. It is the process of transformation. Amen. So if you are just saved, sitting down in church, warming the pews, <laughs> you are no use to anyone. Your life must mean something. If you say, I'm a Christian, I read the Bible, whose life have you touched? Have you transformed somebody's life? Have you said one good word? Have, has your, have you used the gifts that God has given you? It can be as something as simple as being Asha. It can be as something as simple as greeting somebody and telling somebody that Jesus loves them. It can be something as simple as picking somebody from their home and bringing them to church. Offering your services. It can be something as simple as saying, God, I'm a kingdom financier. It can be something as saying, God, I am going to tell somebody about Jesus today. You have to know. If you say that you are a Christian and that you have been saved, what is your salvation for? What is your salvation for? <laughs> salvation is for the lost, not for you anymore. So why, why on earth are you sitting in church? What's the purpose? Why are you a Christian? Say this with me. I am being transformed. See, so now you are working towards your transformation. If you say you're a Christian and you're not being transformed, you're wasting your time. Amen. You're wasting your time. The transformation is about finding my call, my purpose. Why on earth did God create me? What is my purpose? And working towards fulfilling it or you can say pastor I am not interested I just want to come take communion be part of the prayer you bless me I'll go home you want to be that you just want I just want to be a fly on the wall observe and go it's totally up to you if that's who you are then I'm sorry to tell you we can't be friends yeah, you can be acquainted, but we can't be friends. Because I am looking for people who say, God, I want more. Amen. Because I'm not called. I'm not called. Okay? Just to evangelize. I'm not called just to save the lost. Saving the lost, yes, it's one of my priorities. Telling people of Jesus, yes. It is very important and it is the core of our ministry. But even more than that is your transformation. Because the problem is a lot of Christians are Christians and still broke. They are still Christians and still broken. I'm not talking about just finance. They are broken in their mind. They are broken in their character. They are broken in their, in their wallets. It cannot happen if you don't become a man and a woman of meditation and contemplation. Amen? Say this with me. Meditate and contemplate. You have to. You have to become people who think. People of understanding. Hallelujah. Discipleship is the key. Amen. Discipleship. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Hi, 
verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. Are you there? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who... Keep them in the midst of your... For they are life to those who find them and held to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you, lest your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Say this to me. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established he's saying here ponder the path of your feet see many of you do don't think before you act you you you, you just walk you just whatever whatever comes life is not about chance if you leave your life to chance you'll you'll end up in a place that you don't want to and you ask God, God, how did I end up here? Because you left your life to chance. Life should be the result of the deliberate choices you make. Say this with me. My life should be the result of the deliberate choices that I make. Which means if you leave your life to chance, by chance you will end up somewhere. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says that the Spirit of God reveals the mind of God to us. Amen? Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are sons of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. The mind of God, you have access to it. The problem is you have not ascended far enough to hear and see the mind of God. We are not ascended. We are still working and operating in the earth realm. When you operate in the earth realm, you will only see what you see in the natural. It says, ponder the path of your feet. Which means, when you are walking, you ponder. Think about it. Contemplate about it. Meditate on it. God, what does my future look like? Many years ago, I saw my future. When everybody else saw a man, I saw myself as something else. I saw myself. Right now, I'm sitting down. I'm telling you dreams that I see in the future. What am I doing? I'm pondering my path. I'm not just dreaming. It's not whimsical thinking. It's not a castle in the clouds. It is because it is based on the vision and the word that the Spirit of God gives. If you don't learn to see into the supernatural, it will be very difficult for you to things, build things in the natural. You can't just show up and expect things to happen. You can't just show up and say, you know what, uh, I'm going for an interview right now. <laughs> Forget about it. What is the backup that you have built? What is the stamina that you are built in your spirit is going to show up. Amen. Have you ever heard of muscle memory? They practice so much, so much, that when they show up for the game, it just automatically they begin to flow in that rhythm. Are you with me? The same thing applies to your spirit. You practice prayer so much, Seeing things in the realm of the spirit so much. Pondering about the things of God so much. That when storms come, you don't even think. You just face them. And the Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. See, every issue you are going through is because of the result of your mouth. You understand? 
So which means, watch your heart with all diligence. So what issues you want to face, you, 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 from out of your abundance of your mouth, of your heart, your mouth will speak. Every issue that you are going through, you can deal with them from pondering, keeping your heart with all diligence, speaking the right word. And it's not just about positive thinking. It is not just about positive talking. It is about having a meditative, contem contemplating mindset. Amen. Keep thine words in your heart. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18. Are you there? If you're there, say Amen. Amen. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign of your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall write them on the doorsteps of your house and on your gates and your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to you and your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth for if you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do to love the Lord your God to walk in all his ways and to hold fast to him then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourself the reason why when you come to a new nation there are powers there are giants and there are demonic principalities that are holding on to the nations. Are you with me? So when you come to the nations, uh, there are things that will resist you. But God is saying and promising that if you hold on to my ways, uh, you shall, you shall what? Dispossess them. Meaning, no matter what resistance comes before you, you shall dispossess them. Why do you dispossess them? Because when you meditate and contemplate on what God has spoken, there is something supernatural that happens in your spirit that you gently grow, 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 grow. And when you start to grow, you become a giant in the spirit and you begin to dispossess the enemies that are in the land. Hallelujah. You can't just show up and just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to take authority. No, there is a process through which God takes you. And the process might start difficult. The process, you might face some resistance. The process, you might say, Lord, why am I facing all these things? But God is strengthening you. He's uh, training your hand for war. Say this to me, God is training my hands for warfare. When I mean warfare, we don't wage war like, like you know how Pentecostals wage war. You understand? I was raised, I was born and raised in a Pentecostal background, where there was so much focus and on warfare. I don't wage war like that anymore. We wage war from a place of authority and victory. Amen. But at the same time, you have to understand that there is a process that God takes you through. Every level that you go through, you are meant to grow. Hmm? If you don't have the mindset for the next level, when you come to that level, when it, the difficulty comes, you are not able to face it. Are you with me? So no matter how much you pray, you are easily defeated in your mind because you are not able to defeat that mindset. The devil works in the realm of the mind. Hmm? Demons work in the realm of the soul. Which means you have to mount up on wings like eagles to go to a higher realm where you don't operate in the levels anymore. When you see in the natural, you remain in the natural. You believe in the natural. 
and you'll allow the natural to dominate your life hallelujah we have to ascend to where god is we have to ascend to where zion is and that's where true power and true authority happens you want change in your life but you're not willing to ascend you want transformation in your life but you're not willing to let the word of god transform you it starts with pondering a thinking man and a woman i think about things i contemplate about things amen when i'm sitting down when i'm driving when i'm sleeping when i'm resting what am i doing i'm contemplating thinking about the word of god when i don't understand a situation in my life i don't say why didn't it happen i look at the word and say god teach me more lord that my, i might understand this situation and grow more when faced with difficulty when faced with a impossible situation when faced with a situation that is difficult no, yes i've been believing god but nothing's happening immediately why instead of that god you're working on my life i'm going to be more patient i'm going to go deeper into the word hallelujah instead of complaining go deeper into the word instead of complaining ponder more and meditate more and get deeper into the word hallelujah isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you trust in the lord forever for in yah the lord is everlasting strength for he brings down those who dwell on high you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you peace is the ultimate sign of a christian whose mind is on the lord always The moment you start seeing a lack of peace is when you start asking yourself you have come down you come down from Zion hmm God's plan and purpose for you you are you are meant to be in the higher realms all the time say this to me I am in this world not of this world so which means you are present but you are also not present hmm You are present in this world. You are, I, I like to socialize. I like to laugh. I like to eat good food. I like to have nice experiences in this world. But I'm also connected to Zion. Amen. You are experiencing job. You're working, but your mind is set on the Lord. Amen. How can you reach that place? You cannot reach that place without meditation and contemplation. It's not the hours of prayer that you pray. it is the focus of your prayer that's going to take you to that higher realm amen say this with me the power of meditation and contemplation which means i want much this all our people here to have a reflective nature not a reactive nature when things happen don't react look at it reflect ponder think go back to the word ask the holy spirit move in such a way when you become such a person you become indestructible because you are slowly building an indestructible mind that sort of a person your mind is set on the lord see let me explain how the enemy works in your life the enemy will make it look like is your fault things are not going right and make it difficult for you and when it becomes difficult for you you blame yourself you blame the situation and you begin to complain 
And the moment you complain, the issues of life will begin to flow out of your... Say this to me, the issues of life will flow out of my mouth. So the, 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 the secret is when you train your mind to a place and a, and a position where the issues don't flow out of your mouth. See, it happens to all of us. Then the issues will flow out of your life. You have to now learn how to put a stop to that issue. The Bible says in the book of Jude that the tongue is like a is like a it's like a rudder of a big ship. The ship may be so big. You might think, look at my life is so big. But the tongue is like a rudder that is speaking out the issues of life. Life and death are in the power of your your tongue. You become the architect of your future. You become the architect of your life. Which means you have to allow meditation and contemplation to come inside of you. When you walk in the realm of the natural, it will slowly get into you. If you are if you are seeking God, you are you are you are thinking about the issues of God. You are thinking about the things of God. You are thinking about what is God wanted in my life. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. Are you there? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. The secret things of the Lord, it belongs to the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18. Let's open our Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. See, it doesn't say spirit. Yeah? In your heart and in your soul. And bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontless before your eyes. Psalm 119 verse 11. I'm giving you a few verses for you to meditate on. Psalm 119 verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. How do you overcome sin? By having the word of God bound up in your heart. Don't try to fight sin. Get into the word. <laughs> you can't fight sin. You can't fight temptation. You need the word bound up in your heart. The more word you have bound up in your heart, the more you will be able to become a strong warrior in the realm of the spirit. Amen? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search out the matter. How many of you are kings and priests in this place? Sons of God who are kings and priests. See, the secret things belong to the Lord. Okay? Which means God has not left them out in the open. Because treasures in the natural are also deep under the earth. A treasure is a treasure because it is rare. If it was available everywhere, it is not a treasure anymore. You have to make efforts to get to the treasure. Similarly, God hides wisdom. Okay? God hides the wisdom. Okay? It's there in plain sight, but you can't see it. You have to work towards it. Okay? Now, like I said, after your salvation, you are saved. Yes, you will make heaven. Yes, your spirit is saved. But there are many spirit-filled, well-meaning Christians who lack wisdom. Okay? They are spirit-filled. They know the word in a dogmatic, 
religious way but they have not contemplated enough to apply it the right way with wisdom so these are the kind of people who are dangerous they can take scriptures out of context and apply it out of context yeah you with me so you have to understand that it is the holy spirit who gives you wisdom yeah if any of you lack wisdom ask spiritual pride comes when a fellow who just gotten saved is not growing he says i don't need anybody i just need myself i don't need the church i don't need anybody i just need the holy spirit and myself he is fooling himself god has set a way in which we need to grow amen the one person came and said the bible says the anointing teaches me all things so i don't need anybody else then why did god put teachers in the house of god yeah so if the anointing teaches you individually okay go learn the bible why did god put teachers in the house of god why did god appoint apostles in the house of god the meaning there is when the anointing teaches you all things what happens is this we all can get revelation okay but there are some who are anointed to teach okay so which means the gift of teaching within them helps them to teach you you do your own bible study you are learning the anointing is teaching you when you come to church you go to a higher realm of understanding when you have the humility and say i know this but i'm still sitting under the feet of my apostle and learning you now that that dimension of your knowledge double fold increases there are some people i talk to them look this is foolishness let me explain to you this is plain foolishness i'll be teaching them something and they will be telling me back i know i will stop right there because they think they know better than me maybe they do but when i know something when i sit with my spiritual father and he's teaching me something i said teach me sir i'm listening humility is the key say this to me humility is the key to learning you may know more than me but when you talk you learn to listen that's why i've been given two years and one mouth Are you with me? There are some who have been anointed to teach. So which means when you hear when you have the discernment in your spirit that this fellow is teaching me something, I have learned things from people who are who are who, who are, I, I know I'm more spiritual than them, but I learn things from them. Are you with me? Say this with me, humility. There are some people I'll be prophesying to them. I'll be telling them this is what God told you. They'll tell me, "Yes, I already know." I I draw the line there. Amen. We need to be the kind of people who are willing to be humble and learn. Hallelujah. So when you are reading the word, the anointing is teaching you, but when you come to a teaching ministry, he say, "Lord, you are taking my understanding to a higher dimension." Because God wants you to grow from glory to glory, from anointing to anointing. He doesn't want you to be stuck in the same level. The same way you see one scripture is not the same way I will see it. Amen. God has given you one dimension of it. Then when I come and preach, you get a different dimension of the spirit in that same word and you grow in anointing. Say this is me meditation and contemplation. So when you begin to meditate and contemplate, you learn to be a humble person. Amen. There are some people who are much much younger than me, but I respect them as older brothers in the spirit and when i go to them i don't talk when i'm with my spiritual father i don't talk i listen i have many things to say but i will not talk why because i know he has so much to give me so when i'm there i will just listen i will just say sir i'm here to receive ah, just listen just receive because there is so much to grow and when he has taught me those things it will take me days and days and days all sit and think and meditate and contemplate about what he has taught me amen and when i meditate and contemplate the holy spring holy spirit will bring me to remembrance of the things he has already taught me 
And I will say, glory be to God, you're confirming what he has taught me. And then on these subjects, I will just dwell on them for days, for months. And until it becomes a part of my spirit, until it becomes, the word becomes flesh. Say this with me, meditate and contemplate. Until the word becomes flesh. Amen. Until the word becomes flesh, you have to meditate and contemplate. It took Jesus 30 years before he started manifesting as a son of God. He knew he was a son of God, but he was meditating and contemplating. He was prayer. He was in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 onwards we see that Daniel prayed three times a day. Daniel was a man of prayer. When you say a man of prayer, a man who was dwelling in the presence of God. Meditating, contemplating, growing. Psalm 25 verse 14. Can somebody read this for me please? Psalm 25 14. Psalm 25 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who? So there are secrets with the Lord, yeah? There are secrets of the Lord. You think God says, shares his secrets with everybody? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Does God have favorites? Huh? Does God have favorites? <laughs> Does God have favorites? He doesn't show favoritism. God doesn't show, but he has favorites. There are some that he prefers over the others. Are you with me? Why? Because that people, those people, they have done something. Look at Abraham. Abraham was born a prophet. The first prophet in the Bible is Abraham. Then Moses. These men did something that others didn't do. Abraham. 90 year old man, impotent. His wife, barren. God tells him, You will be a father of many nations. And God shows him the stars and the sands. Abraham begins contemplating on the stars and the sands. Abraham didn't look at his own body. Hallelujah. The Bible says that what Abraham believed. Amen. He believed against all odds and calls those things that are not as if they were what are those things that are not that he called as if they were he everybody said you cannot have a son he said no please forget about me having a son i am already a father of many nations so your people are saying hey you don't even have the job you say hey you don't know me i own the company in the mighty name of jesus they say that hey you don't have a ministry you don't even you don't even preach you say hey you have not seen my future i'm already preaching to the millions you've seen the future when you become a man and a woman of meditation and contemplation, you see the future. You see things that others don't see and you've got to meditate on it. Because the more and more you meditate on what God has shown you and what God has revealed to you, the secret things belong to those who fear him. What is the fear of God? The fear of God is the Beginning of? Beginning of? <laughs> yeah. Their wisdom is revealed to you. The fear of the Lord is simply humility before the Lord. It is not that you are afraid of God. It is that reverence and humility before God. Amen. It is the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You are meant to seek after the kingdom and all these things should be added unto you. While men are chasing after the things that should be added unto them. There is a realm. <coughs> there is a realm that you reach where things will chase after you. Amen. There is a realm that you reach in the realm of the spirit. There is a height that you reach where things will begin to come after you. But you need to have that hunger. You need to have that hunger. 
without which you will just be ordinary. Because let me explain, everything in this world is designed to keep you where you are. Nothing in this world right now is designed to propel you into your success. Okay? Especially when you become a in, into the kingdom, everything will work against your success. You understand? But when you shift to authority, when you shift to kingdom, all these things will be added unto you. You leave God and try to live in the world, you will struggle. You will struggle for sure, 100% you will struggle. You will have a taste of success, but you will lack either peace or you will be, you, you, you will be sweating and earning peanuts. It will be like as if the money is never enough every month. But there is a place that you reach with God. Where you only serve God. And money starts serving you. You don't serve money. You don't love money. Hmm? You don't love money. Money comes, money goes. You don't care. You are in that realm. We are so lost in God. Say, God, all I need is you. God says, give this, you give. God says, give your car, you give. God says, give this to this person. You, you just give. You don't care about those material things anymore because you reached a place where those things don't matter. Only the kingdom matters. In that place, people now start seeing something about you and they start blessing you. Amen? Things will begin to work in a fashion that you never thought it would work. Hallelujah. Because your meditation is not on the things that you need. Your meditation is on things that, on the kingdom. He says, do you not know that Solomon in all his wealth and glory was not clothed even like this? They, they do not sow and reap, but yet the Lord takes care of them. These things the pagans run after. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to be seekers of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Seekers of the kingdom. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. Deuteronomy 29 29. Can somebody read that please? Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Hey, but those things that are... So, for in order for it to become yours, it has to be revealed. Say this with me, in order for me to possess it, it has to be revealed. Let me explain something to you. Okay? You are fighting for your spouse. Okay, you want to get married. You are 25, 26, 27, 28, and you're saying, God, I'm looking. No matter what haircut you get, it's not going to get your spouse. No matter how handsome you are, or how beautiful you are, how much makeup you put, it's not going to get your spouse. Say this to me it's not my handsomeness, it's not my beauty that's going to get my husband or wife. What's going to get your husband and wife is the revealing of God's word. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You have written a nice, beautiful resume. It's not going to get you your job. What's going to get you your job is what is revealed to you. You stop fighting and you start searching the scriptures. One ray of light from the realm of the spirit will change your life forever. Hallelujah. You've been praying and asking God for healing. You've not received it. Stay in the word. One ray of light and the word of God will come. And no pestilence came over my life. There's something that the word will do that will just change you and transform you. You just stay in the word and it will bring restoration to your life. The secret things belongs to the Lord. But these things be, but 
those things which are revealed belong to us. Say this to me, when it is revealed, it belongs to me. So it cannot belong to you until and unless it is reveal to you the problem is you go to god like this see this is how most of you pray you, not most of you i'm just saying i'm watching those who are watching as well i know that you guys pray better than that i'll tell you how you go and you say god please do this for me please do this for me please do this for me. please useless prayers send to your neighbor and say stop praying useless prayers stop begging god stop asking god do this for me do this for me please you're wasting your time and god's time you need to be the kind of person that says, God, reveal secrets to me. Reveal things in the scripture. Reveal things in the word. Reveal to me, oh Lord, the moment light comes, you don't ask God. You say, God, I know. <laughs> you say, God, I know my future. God, I know that's what you revealed to me. Then when God is revealed to you, you stand in the word, you hold in the word, you meditate and contemplate in the word until the word becomes flesh in your life. Am I speaking to mature Christians here? Say this to me. I don't beg God. I seek after him. I seek after his heart. And the moment, see, this is like this. You are in prayer. It may take days. It might take weeks. It might take months. It might take years. You are just there. And you're saying, God, I'm just seeking after you. All I want is my growth. Is my growth. Say to me, my growth. Say to me, my growth. Say my growth. Say I want to grow. That's all you're focused on. You're focused on your growth, your growth, your growth. You don't care. You don't, this one comes, your wife comes, your husband comes. You don't care. You just stay on the growth. When you stay there, the revealing will come. The light will come. It will just pass through. And from the spirit to the natural, it will pass through and you will catch it. And the moment you catch the light, you say, God, thank you. Now you come from a person who's asking from a, to a person who knows. When you become what you, when you become a person that knows, you become a dangerous person. <clears throat> because now you know and you stand on your right and your authority and you saw the secret thing belongs to those who fear him. The secret things belongs to the Lord our God, but it is revealed to us and it belongs to us and our children forever that we may do all the words of this. Law. So when the word is revealed to you, it becomes yours and for your children. Which means many years ago when God told me I cannot fail, it was revealed to me through a ray of light that passed from the realm of the spirit to the natural. I caught that word, I stand on that word. And that is the word that I speak to you guys and you stand on that word. That's why building lives, fulfilling destiny. Why? We cannot fail. Say this to me, I cannot fail. I cannot die before my time. None of you will die before your time in Jesus' name. I prophesy that over your life. None of you can fail. Even if you try to fail, your failure will be so successful. There are people who say, that's failure, I don't know what failure is. If you call that success, I don't know what your success is. Amen? Even if you try to fall, you will not fall in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God has a way of bringing you back. You are too blessed to be cursed. Hallelujah. You may walk through the valley of shadow of death, but you fear no evil. For God's rod and staff, they will comfort you. Hallelujah. Such was the level that Daniel walked in. He knew the secret things of God. And God blessed him in the midst of that place. Hallelujah. So we need to become a people who meditate. People who contemplate so let your prayer life change let it go from give me give me god to show me god let it go from communicating what you want into a communion with him amen babies need prophecy children need prophecy if you come to me and ask me to prophesy over life it was in the beginning stages I prophesied over every one of your life, right? And every word has come to pass. None of it has fallen to the ground. Pastor Twinkle has pinpointed certain details in your life. You can't deny the prophetic in, the, in this church. She has even told the names of the schools around your location, your, your location. She has called the names of brothers and sisters. Birthdays, dates have been called out. Huh? Beyond which, what shall we tell you? 
You understand? Those are, that, those are things we have been told. We have a prophet in the house. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, don't know, I don't sit in the office of a prophet. She sits. She speaks. I may be your prophet, but I'm here to be an apostle to teach, to grow. But what I'm trying to say is, you receive the prophetic. What are you doing with it? Amen. Now you go to the next level. The prophetic is for you to know that God is real. Huh? For you to know that God is real. That God speaks. Hallelujah. So we, we demonstrate that power. But it's not just for show. What do you do with that knowledge? Now you go sit in the presence of God. There is a prophetic anointing here in this church. An apostolic grace. So what do you do with that? You go and sit. And God will begin to reveal secrets to you. And when God reveals those secrets to you, I promise you, when you go into that realm, when Robin is teaching, when Pastor Twinkle is teaching, when I'm teaching, it will resonate with your spirit with what God has already spoken to you. Am I speaking to mature Christians here? Am I calling forth you up to a higher realm? How many of you want to go up to Zion? Let's stand to our feet. Meditative contemplative. Don't just pass through life ignorant. Become a thinker. Meditate. Learn to meditate. Learn to think about things. Ask questions. Ponder about things. Don't just say, oh, bad luck. Don't just say, oh, my time. No, 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 no. Don't talk about things like fate. Stand on faith. Stand on his word. Come up hither to a higher realm. Don't look at all the problems and everything that you go through. Say, just focus on the Lord. Say this means Jesus, this season, I'm focusing on the secret things of the Lord. Let the secrets be revealed to me in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of, lift up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the grace of to know secrets. The release, O oh Lord, of the unction to understand the secret things of God. Lord, that they will no longer walk in the lower realm of mortals, but they will come up hither to the immortals, O oh Lord, where you begin to release things to them. Lord, they will see things in the realm of the spirit, understand things in the realm of the spirit, and they will not walk like mere men. They will walk in the realm of immortals like gods on this earth. They will rule over every dominion spirit in this territorial spirit, so Lord, of this land. They will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. They will stand over them. They will tread over them. And Father, you have given them authority, Lord. Everywhere there is there is a there, there is resistance. They will fight and bind the resistance and keep moving forward. I release grace, O oh Lord. I release grace and multiplication in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for visas that are being released right now. Thank you, Lord, for PRs that are being released right now. Lord, open doors in the name of Jesus. Open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. New opportunities, O oh Lord. Right now, I release a release lanso koto let it be released in the name of jesus i release it over your life receive it the grace right now i break everything that is coming against you receive the grace it flow out of you in jesus name lanso kobata de libre naso tigedaba i release the grace for marriage in the name of jesus before this year ends i prophesy it is settled in your life in Jesus' name. Lonzo Komanga Dada Labra. I release the grace for marriage. It is released upon your life. You will not struggle anymore. It is settled in Jesus' name. Le Grozi E Mazoko Raza Talaba. Come on, lift up your voices and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. 
in the name of Jesus father let something change within me Lord open the eyes of my heart and of my understanding in the mighty name of Jesus father we thank you for this day eyes are being opened right now new hunger is being poured upon you right now you're going up to Zion your understanding is increasing your spirit is opening up to new realms of revelation we bless you we thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen 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 god bless you have a blessed blessed sunday remember it's not about knowledge as in gnosis it is about the knowing which is the experience that you have with god amen the epignosis that you have with god is what you contemplate on it takes time. It takes patience. Stay there until you reach there. Hallelujah. Next month, I've declared, is a month of prayer. Next month is a month of prayer, which means we're going to be praying all month. We're going to have night vigils. We're going to be praying. So prepare yourselves. You're going to have godly encounters. Things are going to shift. Amen. Say this to me. Things are shifting in my life. It has to shift this year. Amen. God bless you.